the Finish Line, a podcast on the Everyday Athlete Podcast Network, where every two weeks I will be chatting with ordinary people doing extraordinary things on their path to their own finish line. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode four of Beyond the Finish Line with Joe Harden with the Everyday Athlete Podcast Network. Today, we have none other than Troy Meadows. Troy hosts one of my favorite podcasts, Mid Packer Pod. With the, free, with the Free Trail Podcast Network, he's also founder of Round Trail Life, a sustainable apparel company. Troy is a steward of the trail running community and just an overall rad dude. Uh, I can't wait to sit down with Troy for this chat. Also feel free to submit comments, questions for Troy, and we will get to those throughout the podcast. Also, if you feel so inclined, please head to the Everyday Athlete Podcast Network and smash that follow button. There's a great community that we're building of podcasters there with some fantastic content coming your way. So without further ado, let's bring Troy on. What's up, Troy? Hey, Joe. How you doing, man? Thanks How's for having going, me on. Man? Man, this is rad. Um, so I'm so glad you're here. Um, I guess we'll start with, uh, tell me how to get into running. Let's start there, Troy. Oh gosh, how I got into running. Okay, so I ran in I ran in high school my freshman and sophomore year, like cross country, did like the 800 of the mile. Um fell out of love with running. I was like really into aggressive inline skating uh for a long time and kind of got like, you know, cuz kind of counterculture, alternative rock like was all about like growing my hair out long and shaving up the sides and wearing well, big baggy jeans and um and plaid shirts and just kind of like running wasn't really my thing. My dad was the running and cross country coach for the high school. And so um I ended up being like I spent two years being what was it like I I ran around and filled the water jugs up and did like all of the things for the team, but I didn't actually run. I will say he was a little bummed with me because he didn't start coaching and I basically like the years he started coaching the team is when I stopped kind of engaging in, in the running in my high school um and then that kind of started it so i like always i was never amazing at it you know uh but i like doing it and uh well i like doing it at the time and then i uh, fell out of love with running in my 20s uh, and came back to it uh gosh so my mom passed away my dog died and i turned 30 in the same week and it kind of like it kind of opened up a, a whole world of like, you need to do something with your life kind of like from a physical standpoint, you know, like you can't just like smoke cigarettes and do nothing for the rest of your life. It's not a good look. And so, uh, you know, I basically quit smoking cigarettes the day I found out my mom passed away. Um, and she died of lung cancer, never smoked a day in her life. And then, um, got back into running and started running. and was like, I found I could just do like a 5k pretty easily. Like I just like right off the couch could run like three miles. I was like, okay, cool. And um, so yeah, that kind of started, you know, I turned 30 and got back into running and then what really kicked off, what really kicked it off. I mean, honestly, I traded, I traded a very serious nicotine addiction for a dopamine addiction around my, around running. And so that like, I, I will say I have a little bit of an addictive personality. Um, and so I got hooked pretty quickly again. And then, um, I read this book called born to run and I was like, oh, and I was training to do like a Spartan, you know, whatever, you know, the, the, the obstacle course race thing. And I read board to run. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this Spartan race anymore. Like I want to run ultras. And so then that just kind of started my journey of, of like kind of running ultra marathons and, um, dealt with some knee de de dealt with like a, a slight meniscus tear and a knee injury early on. It took like about two years to clear up. And then, um, yeah, over, about two or three years over like three years or so got myself into like ultra shape and then ran my first ultra way too cool. Oh gosh. I should have looked at my ultra sign up before this, but that was like back in 2016, something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, did you, so you said you went to like the normal progression, like you did like a 5k and work your way up to ultra or did you just go full? like for trail and ultras yeah well i was always into trails like i was i have a history in ultralight backpacking so that's what i did a lot in my 20s um and so like the idea of going like far 
going long on the trails, but like being very self-sufficient was something I was familiar with and capable of doing. As far as like, I didn't really race a hundred. I didn't really race a 5k. I just realized like, Hey, I could go out the door and run three point three miles. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and then I kind of worked myself up in distance. I think my first race that I ran prior to running an ultra after getting back into running was this race. It's a, it's a Bay area classic on the West coast in California. It's called beta breakers. And you basically run, um, from the Harbor and you run up over the city and you end up at the beach in San Francisco. So you kind of run across San Francisco. It's like an eight mile race and it's not really a race. It's like a big party in San Francisco. Like they block off the streets and people like throw ragers and like, it's a, it's a big thing. People wear costumes and like, it's like me and my buddy did it. And then after that, I, you know, my next, the next thing that I ran was, was a 50 K. Um, but it was really all about just like doing the running thing and loving doing it. And then once I found, once I read born to run and like learned about the community, I was started to kind of, you know, I found about, I found out about, I run far. I went and spectated Western States a couple years before I was even running like really long distances. And so I was like drinking the Kool-Aid, like really stout mixed Kool-Aid, you know, <laughs> like I was drinking from the fire hose. Like I was, I was at Western States the year that Timmy Olsen broke Scott Jerk's course record. Um, you know, was there the next year when, when Tim, um, held off Rob Carr, Rob Carr. And if there was another like mile in that race, Rob would have probably passed him. Like it was like about the closest the race has finished in a long time. So I like, and I always spectated it. And like, I went to Robinson flat, then I went to Michigan bluff, then I went to force Hill, then I went down to the river, then I went to the finish. So I like watched the leaders. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of, I never really like my father-in-law is always like, Oh, you should run a marathon. You, 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 you probably surprise yourself. I'm like, I don't want to run a marathon. I don't want nothing to do with running like that much distance on the roads. I do run on the roads like weekly. Most of my miles are done on the roads. And then the weekend is where I get to go explore the trails here around Asheville. So, oh, that, so that's cool. So you already had like, you already, you know, into the outdoors and stuff before you started running. That's, I've, kind, I've kind of gone yeah, the very other much. way. Like I started trail running and now, you know, ultra running too. And now, now, now I'm hiking and stuff like, so it's kind of cool. Like, I mean, it's kind of flip flop, but, uh, and likewise, I, I still haven't ran a standard marathon either. I, I'm kind of afraid of running on the road that far. <laughs> I think I'd rather pick any other distance on a trail than running a standard road marathon. But. I've talked to people who have told me, like my friend qualified for Boston back in his forties. So it was like, get to run a decent time to qualify, but he said he'd rather run a 50 miler than run another mar another road marathon that's how bad it just beat beat him yeah. up and to so do the I work did. to run fast i think was what he he also referenced to it's like if you want to run a fast marathon like the the work you have to do to run a fast marathon is just it it punishes you so yeah i agree with that like i think the worst i've ever felt was my fastest half marathon versus my first 50k i was you know back on my feet in a couple of days that first my fastest PR half marathon on a road, like just tore me up for like three or four days. But yes, I agree with that. Um, so I, I kind of want to back up a little bit and tell you a bit about, um, you know, my, my love for the mid packer pod. It's one of my favorite podcasts, man. Like, um, thanks brother. And I, and I just, you know, I just kind of want to shout you out a little bit here. Um, when I first got into running, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know trail running existed. I was just I was just absorbing everything I could find about running in general, and I found the Bitpacker Pod, and I was like, you know, nothing against like, uh, you know, podcasts that have like all the elites and all that stuff, um, but I was just like, oh man, like, like these are regular people too. I mean, you you know, it's a mixed bag, but I was just like, you can run in the woods. Like, I love being in the woods. So I started diving into the Bitpacker Pod, and that you know that turned me on to a lot of other podcasts and you know and things like that and then i listened to um the, the podcast with om gandhi and i reached out to him and um uh, you know like we talked about in the green room fast forward january till now i'm writing and podcasting for for a run try bike and so i guess just a shout out to the mid packer pod i i um it's one of my favorites man and just having you on this podcast um i'm like super stoked nervous 
uh, but honored that you're here, man. Um, I just, you know, I got to say that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would say I just appreciate that, Joe. And I, it's, it's, I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you obviously you said it in the green room, but like, I just had no idea. And I love like just the full circle aspect of that story. And then, um, you know, for me as someone who's like creating content in the ultra running in, in, in the trail running community and, and within the space, it's like, I love what I'm doing. But when I get to hear stories like that, it really, it just like, it juices the stoke a little bit more, man, just to see yeah. that like there are circles being created within circles and then like opportunities are opening up and like, here we are talking on your podcast and it all kind of stem from, um, one of the episodes that I created with, with, with our man home. So that's, yeah. that's actually, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, I guess just keep it up, man. You're, you're creating a space and fostering a, um, a community that's growing and it's, it's so it's super rad. Um, so mid packer pod, I need to ask, how did it come to be? I need to know everything about the mid packer pod. <laughs> yeah. So the origin story is actually kind of funny. So, um, I, I had spoke, so I, I've been like, I'm not a founding member, but like, I was like, Dylan and I joke, like, I probably was like the second person to sign up for a subscription to what they were doing at the time, which was called pillars. And then at the time his podcast was called the well. And I mean, to be honest, like I told myself, I was like, man, I got to figure out how I can be a guest on Dylan's pod, you know? And I was like, I'm not fast. And at the time, like he's, he, like he brings on like elite athletes and tells their stories, which I love listening to myself, but like, I'm not that guy. I'm totally not that guy. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to plug into the community and I'm going to see what, you know, I try to add value as much as I possibly can. And that's ultimately what happened. Like I, you know, it turned from pillars into free trail. Um, we, they've been doing office hours for a long time. And so like every Wednesday, if you're a member of free trail pro, you have access to office hours and I missed this week and it's like, because I had to, I, had, um, I have a two year old son. So I was on dad duty and I just kind of spaced honestly that the call was going on, but you know, I basically have been to every single office hours that they've ever done. We have amazing conversations there. And sometimes we bring on guests. Sometimes we talk about training. Sometimes we talk about just what's going on with free trail. Sometimes we talk about like, obviously like Western States is happening. So there's like a big, push around the content that free trail is putting out around Western States. We talk about that, um, but it's really just like an open place where you can get access to Dylan, Ryan, uh, Dylan Bowman, Ryan thrower. Um, and just kind of like, it's a, it's a very safe place for the community to ask questions too. And so like one day they needed someone to fill in for office hours. And I was like, yeah, I got you. Like, let's do it. I'll, I'll like pick a topic and we'll talk it up for, for, for the community. And so they gave me the, the, the zoom call, the zoom, the zoom login. And I just, I hosted an office hours and it, and at that time, like I was one of the first ones to do that. There's a couple other team members, a couple other community members that will step in and do that as well. And they'll actually bring on guests and host guests. Um, but it was something where like, I was like, yeah, I have no problem doing it. And the community enjoyed it. And then, you know, obviously Dylan and Harmony appreciated having uh, Harmony as Dylan's wife, appreciated having someone that they could kind of, uh, that could help out in that capacity. And at the time, like I had that time slot really wide open. So I was like very excited to do that. Um, and still am. And, um, but so that kind of Dylan and I started having a conversation maybe four months before the pod launched. And I told him, I was like, Hey man, I'm really thinking about starting a podcast. He's like, Oh, you really should. I think you'd be really good at it. And then I started thinking about the idea and I was incubating in my head and I was thinking like, Oh, what would it be? I was like, Oh, I really want to tell, like, I already had like the idea. Like I want to tell the stories of the middle of the pack. Like I don't want to tell the elite stories. I want to tell something that's like a little bit unique. And I want to highlight some of the really cool work that's going on that people are doing on and off the trails. So it's, it's going to be a lot about talking about running because that's what we do. But like everyone is, I mean, we're all such special little snowflakes. And I say that in the best, in the best term, you know, like we're all doing like really cool and unique things. And a lot of it wraps around, around our running. And, uh, I remember the week. So Joe, you asked, I'm telling the story. I remember the week that I was like, I'm going to message Dylan and see if they want to put this on the network. So that way I can have help with, I can have some su the support of the community and what I'm doing as opposed to like going on my own. And like the next day he sends me a text message and he's like, 
hey bro you still keen on producing a podcast and i'm like what like are you reading my mind like yes let's go so then we set up a call we talked about it and they're like oh i love this idea and a lot of it was about like let's highlight the community members but let's just let's like let's just highlight the middle of the pack and it was one of the it was one of the things the feed the, it was a piece of feedback that kept coming back to them at free trail was we I, people wanted to hear more about the middle of the pack and so it was kind of like it it was something that like they were seeing the community wanted and then i was already thinking about it and then i mean literally it all just like came together at the perfect moment and so um you know within i think within two or three weeks of that conversation you know i had kind of picked up a bunch picked up the gear kind of did a bunch of research worked with ryan ryan thrower who's like the main creative at free trail um he really helped me like uh kind of just get a little bit my feet like grounded around like what it would take to produce the pod and then it, it's <clears throat> excuse me and then like i produce the entire thing so like i do the guest outreach i edit it um you know free trail is amazing because they help me with the hosting and i'm i'm like kind of an idiot with the hosting because i have no idea but i imagine i think it costs i know it costs monthly to do it and so i'm very happy that, that they're willing to pick up that cost but at the end of the day um you know it's kind of my baby and they let me just do what they let me do whatever i want and they trust me and uh i'm excited to be able to give back to them by uh repping free trail and then ultimately i could do i do a little you know i talk about free trail quite a bit uh, on the podcast but ultimately i mean that's you know joe that's that's how it came to be it was kind of the very serendipitous situation of i wanted to do it i had a lot of free time at the time and it was feedback that free trail was getting and so they they kind of leaned in and they were like who could do this and i was top on the list because of all the value i'd added back to the community over over about a year and a half so that's right that's right i i kind of had the same moment as you like i saw like an email you know like hey would, would you be interested in hosting a podcast and i was just like can't be real right i think i just <laughs> i think i screenshotted it and like it was like you want me to host a podcast it's like yeah i was like what <laughs> like it's so it's so wild but that's 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 that's, a, that's fantastic man it's a um, and, and to and to and to bring it full circle i've never been on dylan's podcast but it was a really cool moment for me to actually have him come on my podcast uh a couple weeks back and then um yeah and so it was kind of like one of those like moments for me where i was like well this is cool because i wasn't quite a like still have the goal but it's almost like i've kind of fulfilled that goal by being able to to have dylan on as a guest on my on, on my podcast so Yeah, that's wild. I, yeah, as soon as I saw, as soon as I saw that episode, I was like, all right, I gotta listen to this today. But <laughs> yeah, that's rad, man. Uh, so, okay, tell me about tell me about Run Free Trail too. Uh, kind of run us through what that is. Oh, maybe Run Trail Life. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, so, sorry, Run Trail Life. Yeah, Run Trail Life is just kind of like a little side hustle I put together. Um, I started working on it probably two years ago and we just do it's like i do all the design it's kind of fun stuff it's like really about like it's all like organic cotton blanks and it's just uh it's kind of like pays homage to ultra running but it's not about like tech gear it's not about like um it's not about creating you're not gonna yeah i guess the trucker i'm like wearing a trucker hat like this thing has a really sweet sweatband in it so you could definitely run in the trucker but like the gear isn't meant to run in. It's the stuff that like you pull out to head to the coffee shop or head to the to the brewery after your run and you throw it on and it's like says stuff like you had me at long run or like ultra runners do it longer. That's like one of my favorite tees. Um, this is a like what the shirt I'm wearing today is that mid packer lot that mid pack life. And um, I need to put this on the site. It, it this is and this is like the sample and I like been wearing it for six months and just I I've got a lot going on, Joe, yeah. but this shirt should be on the site, you know, at this point. Yeah, um, it but it's really, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's just like, it's something fun for me to do. It's a little bit of a passion project. And the idea is like, how do we create some, how do we create some stuff that people like 
enjoy wearing to represent their love of of the trails and ultra running and get people to kind of ask questions like what do you what is that you know like what do, what do you mean by that right uh there's a shirt that we did um it's called like european i call it european champions because i don't want to like shout out utmb too much i don't want to get i don't want to get a cease and desist from them <laughs> but uh the shirt is basically like um oh gosh it's it's all the way i wish I, I should have it in front of me here but it's all the last names of the uh no it's all the first names of all the women who have won utmb um and and then the last name is jim so it's like it's uh i don't want to forget i don't want to forget anybody here but it's it's chrissy it's nikki it's rory it's um courtney it's katie and then it says and jim you know and so the idea is like it's like the idea for that is like just to highlight hey like these ladies have been crushing utmb for 20 years and you know jim you know jim stands on their shoulders as uh, as the first male to finish the race but it's like kind of you know it's kind of an homage to just like the women in ultra running um so it's like fun designs like that i mean the uh, uh it would be really cool if i could retire on run trail life money but i don't see that happening anytime soon um but yeah it's it's just something that i like i enjoy doing and uh i it's a little bit of a creative outlet for me that and the pod itself so and they work together i mean i I shout out run trail life on the podcast. Um, I'm a little like nepotistic with my sponsors right now. You know, it's, it's run trail life and, and it's, and it's a free trail. Um, but yeah, it's just a way for me to kind of, um, do something else for the community. That's just a little bit different. You know, it's like not tech fabric. It's not something you're going to run races in. It's something that, that you're going to put on when you're hobbling around after you finish your ultra or after you finish your long run and, and, uh, you're going to go out on the town. So <laughs> yeah, that's rad, man. Uh, yeah. Keep, keep making, making all that good stuff. Man. It's, it's cool. stuff. Yeah. As soon as that shirt, get, as soon as that shirt gets listed, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have to have that. I, I'll yeah. I get a lot of, com I've gotten a lot of comments online about it. So I definitely need to put it up there. Maybe um, I'll carve out the time this weekend. Yeah. It doesn't take it. it I need, I need 45 minutes and it's done. I just need, to, you know, it's, it's that whole thing where it's like, man, like there's so many other things I need to do. And then, um, but then I'm also looking at, a, I mean, I'm missing out on a golden opportunity here because like everyone loves the mid pack life shirt. So I uh, definitely got to get it on the site. Yeah. I would definitely rep that shirt for sure. Um, so I want to talk about your, your lost coast trail FKT too. Um, let's do it. Yeah. I need to hear more. Um, so Wherever you want to start with that, I'm ready. Yeah, so COVID is really what happened, right? So COVID happened and no one was doing anything. FKTs kind of became, I don't know, they came very, they, they came back in vogue, right? It was, uh, people went hard on the FKTs. And I started looking around at the time I was living in Sonoma County in uh, Petaluma. And I started looking around my area and where I could stay local. And um, the Las Coast kind of came on came back on my radar and it's 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 a route that i knew about from my ultralight backpacking days so um you know traditionally you, this is a route you do if you do it traditional backpacking it takes you a week if you do it ultralight style you do it in two or three days um you need a permit to get to do the beach section and so, you know, there's basically a wait list and there's a lottery and there's all these things. And like people wait a long time to basically pull their permit to do, uh, to do, um, Matt hole to, to, um, what's that road and what's that town in the middle? It'll come to me. Uh, but basically to do the beach section, um, the route itself, it's 27 miles of beach followed by a 50 K, uh, in the mountains. And, um, it's not just all beach running. There's about seven miles of trail that you get up on, on the side of the beach. And then there's a lot of, there's not really sand. There's a lot of like really small gravel beach sections. And then there's several, several, several hundred yard sections of rocks as big as my head and bigger that you have to kind of navigate through. Um, and so, yeah, COVID hit, it came on my radar and I was looking at, I was looking at the unsupported time and it was set by um, Ricky Gates and Lenore had gone out and did it several years before. And I looked at their time and I was like, 
it looks soft, you know, like the time, their time looks soft. It was like 13 hours and 40 something minutes. And I was like, it's only, it's like, it's less than a hundred K like I'm feeling pretty fit. It only has 9,000, you know, it's got 10,000 feet of, of climbing. Um, you know, it can't be that, you know, it just can't be that hard. And, um, so I went out and I was in okay shape. I was training a little bit, but I wasn't very serious about it. I just kind of showed up. Um, obviously I was like ultra fit and I did my research. I realized that, you know, the beach section is impassable in three spots. And so you need to time your route across a low tide. And so I started looking at the windows, the tide windows, and there was going to be a really, there's basically it kind of undulates and like every fourth or fifth low tide, there's like a really low tide. It just kind of like how it works out. I was like looking at the pattern and I was like, okay, cool. Here's the day. Let's go do it. I got to start at this time. Um, and so I went and did it. I did the beach section, um, got through it. And I got, I remember getting off the beach, the, the spoiler alert, I had to go back again. So the first time I went, um, I, I, the first time I went, I remember getting off the beach. I felt good, but I remember getting off the beach section and being like, my hip flexors are toast, like just completely toast. And then you have, um, you had shelter cove is where you run to. So you run from Matol to shelter cove. And then once you get out of shelter cove, you have, it's, it's like 3000 feet of climbing on, it's like five mile road. It's like a little over 3000 feet of climbing on a road Dang. before you get into the King's range. And then, you know, after that you have, it's like 31 minus five. I'm doing public math on the pod, but then you have like 26, 26, 27 miles, something like that. Um, through like what, gets progressively more um game trail i guess would be the easiest way to say it like you start on trail and it just gets more and more rugged and it turns into like this pretty intense bushwhacking session toward the end when you get to usul and the route just chewed me up and spit me out like the first time i went out and did it it just like i told my wife because like it took her her it takes, it took me like 17 and a half hours to complete the route the first time. Um, I told her, I was like, it wouldn't take me more than 15. <laughs> and like, she had to drive like seven. It took almost, it takes like almost, it's like f six or seven hours to drive from the start to the finish. So it takes like six hours to drive 58 miles. You're not driving 58 miles. It's probably more like a hundred miles. Um, and then you wow. have to come down into Usul, which is this crazy dirt road. You definitely need four wheel drive to get down there. But she had been waiting for me forever, like forever. And then like it was during COVID and people were staying on the beach and they were like, it was like, it was like a tent city. It was like a camp down there. It was like a city down there of people like <laughs> living on the beach, right? Because no one's got jobs. No one's got stuff to do. And they're down there with like, it's, this is Mendocino coast. So like there's a bunch of boy, good old boys down there with machine guns and like they were shooting off flares. And like, it was like, I remember I could hear it all cause I'm up on the Ridge trying to come down into Usul. And like, I spent the last 10 miles of that route. Like I just zom zombie marched it to the finish. <laughs> like it was just the wheels just flew off. Um, I get down my wife finally sees me and she's seen other backpackers coming down and she's asking like, have you seen some stupid dude that's running this trail? And they're like, <laughs> they're like, no. And when I see her, like, she's got the look on her face, man. She's like, I didn't know if she wanted to hug me or punch me. You know what I mean? Cause she was so worried about me. And, um, and so, uh, and like I had an in reach with me, so she knew I could call out if I needed help, but like, there was no way for us to communicate cause there was no service and we didn't have two of the devices. Um, so I get down to the finish, like, you know, whatever I'm wrecked, I'm destroyed. I eat some food that she's got for me. I'm in the car, like half passed out while she's driving us back to the house. It's like a three hour drive home or four hour drive home in the middle of the night. And I remember being in the car, being sitting there thinking to myself, like, when am I going back? You know? <laughs> and I didn't tell her this. I waited a couple of days. Um, and then it became my goal for the next year. Like I, I literally, I, I did everything 
everything was focused around that being the A goal. Like I started um, at the time, like free trail had just launched um, a bunch of training plans. So I started, I used, I was using training plans for the first time before then I was just very much a, like, I'm going to run like five or six miles a day and then go long on the weekends. And like, you know, before I get to like a race, maybe I'll do like a big back to back day, you know, like back to back stuff, you know, but it's like, so I started doing workouts. I was like getting super specific. So I was doing my long run. I would do like these, I would do these like three hour steady state runs with like two or three 30 minute steady state sessions in between. I'd go out to the beach up on, up in, I was living in, in Petaluma. So I'd go out to Point Reyes and go out to one of the beaches there and I would just run back and forth on this beach doing these intervals and doing these long runs on the beach, getting super specific. And that would be Saturday. And then Sunday I would get up and go long and try to just like smash as much vert as I possibly could at this local park, um, sugar, sugar loaf park in, in Sonoma County. And I would go run 20 miles, 20, 25 miles. Right. So yeah. I'm like simulating exactly what I'm going to see at the lost coast. And then I thought about like where I was super inefficient and I brought one be free, filter on a 500 ml flask so i had three flasks <laughs> and there's plenty of water on the route but the hard part is like i had to fill the bottle like three times to fill up one of my one of you know to fill a liter i had to fill up this 500 milliliter bottle like th two or three times just to get enough water out and then so i learned my lesson i ordered like a, a liter and a half soft flask so it's like this big collapsible soft flask and so when i would get to a water source and there's plenty of them i would just fill that thing up and my, my goal was like, my, my plan is like, I'll fill that thing up and then I'll just keep walking and I'll be able to filter all my water. I'll be able to put my nutrition in my water, but I'll be able to keep moving while I do it. And so I could just thought about all the things. And then, um, so leading into the next, the, the next trip, it was about a year, almost a year to the day. And, um, man, Joe, I was really, I was really freaking fit. I was like, <laughs> I was ready to go. I was about as fit as I've ever been in my entire life. And I felt really, really good. And my buddy had a little sprinter van that he was building out. So it had like a bed in it, oh, and a little cool. bit of little stove action. And he was like, Hey, I'll drive you. I'll pick you up. He, his buddy had an inReach, So we had two devices so I could communicate with him and then he could communicate out. Um, and so we kind of dialed in all the logistics and it's pretty easy logistics. Cause like it's unsupported. So I'm carrying everything with me. All he has to do is get me there and pick me up. And then, um, so I did it. I went in, I ran, I ran the beach section, like, a half an hour faster, maybe 45 minutes faster than the year before hit the road at shelter cove and ran up the entire, I mean, I run, I like trotted up the entire thing, <laughs> but I like, it was like, I walked that entire thing the last time, you know, the year before. And then I just kept, I just kept, I was groove. I was marble in a groove, man, doing it. I was like the water, the, the liter and a half soft flask worked out perfectly because it's like, it it saved me that probably saved me like 45 minutes out of the 17 30 right oh, and dude. so yeah so i get to the end of uh i finally get to the finish and you know i made it, it i did it in like 14 hours and 20 some odd minutes so i was like definitely short of the uh of i was like half hour 45 minutes off what um what ricky gates had done and i posted about it and ricky was like Oh no, we took support at Shelter Cove because there's a little convenience store where you can buy water. And I think someone brought them water down at Shelter Cove. And so he reached out to the fastest known time site and was like, Oh yeah, you have us labeled wrong. Like we definitely went supported. And so then like oh, that's cool. I so then like ultimately, like I just kind of fell into so technically there was no unsupported route. So I like fell into that. But like I worked, I mean, the moral of the story is like I worked my tail off to get like almost Ricky Gates fit when they were doing and and he says like we took a very pedest pedestrian pace so i'm just like you know i realized like you know i i own a solid 63 percent on on ultra sign up like i am a classic mid packer you know what i mean but at the time like <laughs> in that moment like i was about as fit as i'll as i'll ever be um and it that that, that record has stood for some time so if anyone's out there and they want to go um you have to check because I think the trail may be closed right now. I think they're going, it, it, they're dealing, it, the northern section may not be passable at this moment. But I am happy to give anyone as much beta as they possibly want to go out there and, and have fun and, and take a crack at it. It is um, a rugged, relentless, just ridiculously hard route. I will say that it's it's a fun adventure. It's definitely a very fun, unsupported adventure. So uh, I like how something that I kind of 
gathered that. I like how like, like Ricky was like, "No, man, you've got you've got it." Like, I think that's kind of cool. And then, and then um, it just speaks a lot to the community. And you're like, "Hey, like, if anybody wants to try it, like, I'll, I'll give you, you know, everything I've got." I, think, I just think that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, and he did. And he didn't have, I mean, I just, I happened to tag him in a Facebook post, you know, like I just happened to like engage with him on social media and he was like, oh no, wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh no, 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 dude. We did, we, we took support, you know, it's like, it's, it's just like the honesty that exists in the community. And like he, like he said, he didn't have to do that like at all. Like he, he just, yeah. So it, yeah, it was, it was. Let me say it made my year. It made my decade. I'll be honest with you. So (laughs) I, I love, I love hearing about it. Um, Man, Ricky Gates' transcon uh, documentary. I've been in a thousand of those of those views. Every time I'm stuck in on stuck on a treadmill, that's like that's always in my top five like queue of things I I watch. But um, yeah, that's 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 cool, man. Uh, yeah, definitely reach out to Troy. I'd like to. I've only I've only ran four miles on sand, so I'm just trying to. I'm trying to scale this in my head right now. That's just well, so wild. So, so, so pro tip, run as close to the water as humanly possible because it's All way right. harder there. It's like way harder there. The sand's packed in. Oh, yeah. And okay. like it doesn't give as much. So you're kind of, you know, that's you, you, can, you can kick off a decent pace. But like it's, yeah, it's it slows you down a little bit. You know, it's it's definitely tough. And like you don't have to go out and do, you don't have to go out and do it as an FKT. Like it's a route that's like worthy of, of an adventure. I know, I know several people who have gone out and done it like three or four people deep. And it's, it's cool. Cause as ultra runners, like as long as you plan that, that beach section, right. Like you can get it done and you don't have to worry about the permit and you don't have to like be beholden to like every, all the other backpackers are sitting there just like waiting for their turn like if you're fit enough and you have the experience, you can just go out there and, and get it done in a day. And yeah, maybe it may turn into an 18 hour day or a 19 hour day, but like, Hey, that's, yeah. that's kind of, that's like the fun of it, you know? That's so the, yeah, that's the name. That's the beauty of the game, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's on, it's on a bucket list. Like I, I just want to backpack it. I think it'd be cool. uh, if, if there's anything that ultra running has served for me among the other things that it gives me, it's, it's given me like a, like a really strong, like wanderlust. Um, not you know mm-hmm. obviously uh, like I love the Midwest like we have some hidden gems of trails in Indiana that that probably half the world doesn't know about but um, so I'm not missing out a lot but you know my, my perimeter is getting bigger as I uh, participate more in this community. Um, also, something I want to talk to you about is uh, your run coaching too. Um, kind of how did that start and. Um, Maybe just tell me a little bit about, about you know, how that's, how that's growing too. Yeah. So uh, I have a really small roster. So at the, so I was between jobs for some time. Like I founded this organization with four of my friends. Um, we, it was a company based in California. Like I had a kid, I moved back East, the company itself, the market just kind of, it's been a long, it was a long, like, spiral of slow death for this organization and so uh you know what happens as founders is like the first people that if if you're running a, a solid organization the first people that stop getting paid are the founders it's just kind of how it works and then the founders are expected to work like really hard in order to keep the organization running um and that's kind of what happened so i was like uh there was like a six seven month period eight month period where like um i wasn't getting paid from my organization um, i was still putting in work at in in the organization and i was trying to figure out like well what what are the next steps going to be while i was putting out my resume trying to find a new job um turns out like serial entrepreneurs like it's it's not that easy to just go get a nine to five even though you have more experience than like you know, if you've built anything from zero to like doing millions of dollars of revenue, like it's like, man, you, you've done a lot. You've worn a lot of hats and like you've had to deal with a lot of problems and you're really good at problem solving. Um, and so like that's just like a long, long way of me saying like I was in a pretty tight. I was in an interesting spot. I had a lot of freedom, but I was trying to figure out like what's the next step going to be. And I really wasn't getting the responses um, like in the job market that 
that I wanted. And I didn't want to have to settle for something that I was going to hate doing. And so um, I was looking at the USCA certification and I was thinking about like, what could I do in the space? And I was doing the podcast, um, trying to grow the audience, you know, ultimately kind of the, the goal was like, how do I monetize the podcast? How do I um, put more work into run trail life? How do I like, how do I create some diversified revenue streams? And then like coaching kind of, just made sense right and and yeah. i'm like i am definitely like a student of the game like i love the sport and um i was also like intrigued in that certification as a way of just like making my own training better too was another like it was kind of a selfish an unintended selfish consequence of 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 kind of taking it um and i was looking at the price point and i was like oh it's not that expensive and i i told myself i was like man even if you know you only get a couple a couple of athletes like it'll the certificate will pay for itself very very quickly um and then you know so i got the certificate uh you know put myself out there um you know i still have a couple spots open but what happened was i ended up like connecting with a good friend of mine who's building a, an organization and uh i had an opportunity that was like too good to be like too good to say no to so i ended up getting like I guess it's not a nine to five, but I ended up getting like a real job. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is the first time, this would be the first time in gosh, 20 years that I haven't worked for myself in either building something myself or doing something, uh, you know, doing projects on my own. And so, you know, I started working for, for his company and then, um, you know, that's when like, uh, I, I was like, okay, like I just need to kind of hold the line here at just a handful of of athletes or less because I just don't have the time for it now. Cause now I have like a 40, 50 hour commute commitment with the job. I have like a three to five hour commitment with the podcast a week. And then, you know, a handful of athletes will like keep me way, way busy. Um, that being said, like, you know, if anyone is looking for some mid pack coaching, I've definitely have, I, I have room for a, a couple, a, a, one or two more athletes, but, uh, you know, my approach is very much, um, you know, I like doing interval work. I've been a big fan of it. I've seen it work really well for me, but I also come from like a mid, a mid packer, uh, mentality as someone who's raced a lot of ultras, ran a lot of ultras, done a lot of experiences from the FKT standpoint, also have like a big background in ultra light, uh, backpacking. So for me, it's about like, how do we, um, get people like ready to tackle their ultra goals, you know? And, um, I'm 40 something, you know, I'll be 40, 44, I'll be 44 next month. It's weird to say, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I know. And so I started like incorporating a lot of strength training. You know, I do PT in the evening, three days a week. I do strength training twice a week. Like sometimes I do a little more PT than that. Um, but minimum I try to do like core and PT work, uh, three, four days a week. And then I try to hit the weights, lift something heavy two days a week. And usually that's at night when the kid goes to bed. Um, and then in the morning is when I get my running in. And so like, for me, it's about like, how do we create something that's a little bit holistic for a runner? Um, and like, I'm, I'm just thinking of like people that are kind of in my, my age demographic, you know, you like, you're a middle of the pack runner, you're, um, uh, not young anymore. And so you're looking to like how, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily need to be coached by the tip of the spear. You need to be coached by someone who's got the experience you're looking for. And that's kind of what I bring to the table as far as like, having like a mid pack mentality with my coaching, but also coming at it from a very scientific standpoint. And that's something like, I definitely geek out on the research. I geek out on the data. Um, but for me, it's about like, how are you showing up every day to be like the best version of yourself that happens to be an ultra runner? Um, that's kind of how I look at it from, from a running perspective. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Cause everyone's different. Everyone's like a, a little bit of, uh, I said it before, like, you know, ev everyone is very unique in what their needs are, even though we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. So, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm honestly just curious for myself because I'm kind of on the fence. Like, I keep looking at getting the certification and, and um, you know, same thing. I work a nine to five. I, I'm also, I also have a side business that's unrelated to running. So I've kind of been like dabbling in like, should I get the certification? Because kind of like what you said, I'd like to come at it with, you know, runners like me who are like newer, um, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore. We're not, we're not really sure. uh, trying to podium or anything. Like some of, some of us just want to finish 
and finish healthy. Um, so, you know, I like that you kind of threw out strength training. And that's something that keeps coming up a lot because, you know, I, I promote strength training. It's like, if I don't get my weekly mileage in, you know, be damned, you know, I'll at least get my strength training sessions in regardless of what I stack up for the week. But, so, yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say if you're looking, if you like, if you're self-coach and you're looking to kind of take your understanding of um, endurance physiology, endurance coaching, like to another, to a next, to the next level, like it's, it's definitely, it's a good, um, it's a good starting point. You know, I found that like, because of a lot of my experience and my desire to learn, like a lot of it was stuff that like a lot of it was stuff that I already knew, but then it's also nice to be able, I mean, if you're going to coach people, it's like really nice to like, I hate to be like, it's good to have a diploma. Right. But at the same time, like, it's very nice to be able to have a certificate and say, Hey, like I actually, it shows people that you are willing to like dedicate time and energy into learning something. Um, and then, that pays off with like creating a little bit of credibility. Um, that being said, you know, I, I would, I definitely, I think my next step is going to, is going to be to get some sort of strength training certification. I don't have a certificate for strength training, but, uh, I spent a lot of time with physical therapists and, uh, I do not have a problem like offloading that aspect of the programming to like a professional, or at least having someone go, talk to a professional to say like hey let's get your form dialed in but like these like i can prescribe because i'm like hey this is the single leg stuff that you need to do and then this is the heavy stuff you need to do you know and if you want to do full body stuff like we can work all that in too and um but at the end of the day like the thing about remote coaching that's really tough is like um it's really easy to prescribe workouts it's really like running workouts it's really easy to say hey go do go do these like VO two max intervals. Um, here's the rest. Here's the work. Uh, this is what it needs to feel like, you know, like if you don't feel like you want to stop with 30 minutes to go, you're not running hard enough. I mean, 30 seconds to go, you're not running hard enough. You know, like it's really easy to like dial in how that feels, especially for someone who's intuitive with their running. Um, I think with the strength stuff, it's like, you want to make sure that you have really, really good form when you're doing it. Um, it's not as, it's not at, it's not as impactful if you're doing lighter weight, but if you're trying to like pick up heavier and heavier stuff, uh, form is like super, super, super important. So, yeah, that's something I'm working on. I'm working on like actually lifting heavy. Like I do a lot of single leg stuff and like training and core work, but so definitely, I'm definitely like kind of working my way up to lifting heavy too. Um, certain days, but yeah yeah uh, rdl R- Rom- Rom- romanian deadlifts for life man. bro like i Dude. just i can't they love them bulgarian split squats romanian deadlifts yeah. like love love all that stuff so <laughs> i always hate that starts with an eastern block name then you need to do plenty of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah you should do more of them yeah 100 um well so i gotta ask because you're an entrepreneur you work family uh kid you said you have a kiddo two two year old yeah, um, he's two. A little podcast, over two. Yeah, yeah. A over two. Man, that's they're getting fun then, right? Um, I've got yeah. two as well. I've got a sixteen-year-old and a twelve-year-old. But um, you host this amazing podcast. Um, uh, you do a lot of stuff, man. You wear a ton of hats. Um, how do you balance it all? This is the balance. This is the balance question. I know this question. <laughs> I, I, I asked ask. this question on the pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so I learned when I was building my last business and like in the beginning for the first two years, like there were 80 hour weeks, you know, like there were, it was, I was putting, this is before I had a kid. I was putting my, I put my life into the, that business. Like I was burning it hard on both ends, like both ends of the candle were lit constantly. But what I learned, one thing I learned is that there's always going to be fire. There's always going to be a fire to put out. So it's okay to go to bed with, problems that are happening in the organization right there's always going to be something that has to be done right and uh the other thing i learned is that like if you don't prioritize you first there won't be time later for you so that's where you know the morning is me like i get up in the morning i try to wake up before the kid wakes up um my wife we both work remote but my wife is uh is a lot more flexible in the mornings. And so like, she'll take kind of take on the morning responsibilities for the kiddo. Um, I try to get out the door and get my run in a lot of times, like I'm home to eat breakfast with them. Right. But that that's just like 
where the schedule is. And then in the evenings after the kid goes to bed and like my, right now, my wife and I, you know, cause then I'll watch the kid in the afternoon for a couple hours. She'll do some work. And then once the kid goes to bed, we are either, I am doing the PT and the strength work that I want to do, or, um, I'm actually working on the pod and then she'll be doing her work. So we're kind of like, okay with not, um, really having, I hope to say like lives, but like our lives are revolved around the work that we're doing in our family. And that's kind of what's really important. And so, um, you know, in the evening, uh, it's a lot, that's when I, that's when, if I have the time, that's when I do all my strength work. And then, um, you know, I used to have a lot more time to work on the pod, but usually like I schedule interviews for the pod in later afternoon between, uh, work hours and then dinner hours. And that's when I'll get in the hour and a half, two hour interview sessions. And then I do all my recording in the, I do all my editing at this point in the evening. And so it's just kind of, um, it's a lot to be honest with you, but I really enjoy it. And I think, um, I've like, I, you know, I have a flexible schedule with my work too, as someone like I manage, I run and I run, I own the department that, that, that I work in. And so like, I definitely have like a very flexible schedule there. Um, and it's very much like, it's, it's a little bit more of a performance oriented position. So like, they don't really care how the sausage is made as long as it's getting made, you know? So I can definitely like leverage a little bit of like, what would be your traditional like work hours to do other things. Um, mainly that's just to, like help the wife out and watch the kiddo. And at some point we're going to, I think at some point we're going to bring in some, a little bit of childcare help in the afternoon. And once that happens, I think it's, things are going to get a little bit easier for, for both of us, but that's, you know, you, you say balance. And like, I think the question that I ask it a lot and the answer that I've, I've heard more often than not is like, it doesn't really exist because like what I really am sacrificing right now is like, I don't have a social life, but I don't really want a social life because like between my wife, the work that I'm doing in the community with the pod, which is like very much remote. Um, and then like getting out, I'm a very much a lone wolf when it comes to training. And then I have a couple, a couple people that I know that I'll go run with. And so we'll link up and, and get some run in, runs in, but like, I'm okay with at this point in my life, not necessarily having to hang out with the friend, friend group constantly. Um, and then I have, like I said, I have a two-year-old, so it's like, they're very at two, they're very hands-on, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, you know, you, you said yours are 12 and 16. You're at the like, you're at the like handout, like, yeah, can I get 20 bucks, dad? I yeah. need to go do this stage <laughs> of, the, of, 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 of the life. So that's all yeah. I am right now. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, the balance question, I mean, it's kind of funny because to have the question turned on me, I'm like, huh? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like you just, you, you, you do everything. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't do any, no, you, there's very little that's done exceptionally at this point. So like, even like the running this year has been good, but it hasn't, I mean, it's been good. Like I'm, I'm no complaints, but like, I got to do the races I wanted to do and I'm, my season is kind of over now. I'm just like in it to, I'm just running to, to have fun with it. Uh, all my goals have been met, but like, you know, like I'm not, I'm not in the best shape I've ever been in, but I'm in good shape because I prioritize that quite a bit. Like I prioritize me, like I said, like I'm going to get my run in the morning cause you know, all work and no play makes Troy a dull boy <laughs> and, uh, running just makes me a better person to be honest, oh, to be man. around, to be honest. And then, um, and then as far as like everything yeah and then as far as everything else goes like you know i haven't i think i've missed like one week of putting out the pod in oh we're going on almost a year now so it's like i've been able to to make it happen but sometimes i'm up till midnight like editing the pod because that's just like the the time i have is from you know nine o'clock and it just like something happens and it takes a little bit longer and it always takes a little bit in, in, nothing you know nothing ever goes completely smooth smoothly with technology and so you know you just kind of like bite through it and then you know get it done but that's only like usually a night out of you know that's a night out of the week and that that that, that happens and then um like I said, I have a really small roster. So, you know, when you only have like right now I have a, a couple athletes. And so it's like, that's only a couple hours a week out of my time. And and I enjoy engaging with them as well. And so like, that doesn't take a, a lot of my time. And then to be honest, the one thing that like, the one thing that I probably don't do enough on, we talked, we kind of mentioned earlier is like run trail life. It just kind of, I got it up and running and it does its <laughs> thing. 
but I've put like very, very, very little work into it in the last six months because I just haven't had the time to do it. And it's one of those things where I'm like, oh man, if I'd like just a little bit, a little bit more time, a little bit more time. And I could probably see, um, a lot come out of that work, but I just, it's just, I, it, that's that like next, I don't want to say next season, but that's like the next season of my life is like to, to dedicate some more, some more of that work. Like maybe, maybe if I could actually monetize the pod in a significant way, I could hire out, you know, that they, I've always said, like, as opposed to putting that money in my pocket, like I'll probably like hire someone to do the social media and then I'll hire someone to do the editing. So all I have to do is show up and do like what we're doing right now, yeah. which is the really, really fun part. Uh, and that'll give me back, you know, a couple hours of my week that I could put back and I can then throw those hours into run trail life. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Great, man. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be glad to see that growth. You're on something good there. Like it's good stuff um, for sure. Yeah. Um, find these things. <laughs> um, so is there anything you want to shout out to anything you're working on right now? Anything exciting coming up? Races, yeah. projects? Yeah, well, I mean, okay, so there's a project I'm working on right now with the pod that I'll definitely talk about. But before I do that, I just finished Laurel Highlands. And if anyone listening has not ran in Rocksylvania, which is Pennsylvania for anyone that doesn't know, um, man, this race is a must. It's a must run event. It's a, this was the 45th year. I think they've ran this race. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. It's on a long trail up in Pennsylvania. So it's a 70.5 mile route. It's 70.5 miles because that's how long the trail is. Uh, they put up like maybe 20 course markings. And it's only you kind of run through the ski resort. They kind of flag the descent that you go down to connect the trail on the ski resort. But like other than that, you're just following yellow blazes on trees the entire time. Um, and it's an amazing run ra uh, run event. Um and it's uh it's it's a lot of fun i really really enjoyed myself it's like very grassroots it's got like that old school ultra feel ultra vibe um and it was a really it was like a really really good time um it's also a western states qualifier wow. it happens to be the shortest happens to be the shortest western state qualifier on the east coast that's not put on by utmb and not named uh hellgate and no disrespect to dave horton because he is the man but yeah. Hellgate is really difficult to get into. So I wasn't going to put all my eggs in that basket. Um, and I ran Grindstone 100 miler last year. And I just didn't want to go back to the event. Uh, I wanted to kind of give something else. Um, yeah. Just, well, I wanted to give something. I wanted to give something something else some time. And then the last, uh, the last thing I want to shout out is something I'm doing on the pod. It's called uh, Revisiting Unbreakable. And so what we've done is I've got you know, it's a mini series on the pod. It's like, we're, we're dropping episodes like in the weeks leading up to Western States, we just dropped episode, uh, zero, zero two. Uh, the first episode was with JB Benna, who is the creator and producer of the movie unbreakable. Um, the most recent episode we just dropped is, um, with Hal Corner, who is a legend of the sport and ran yeah. and, and he was a star of the movie. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, he lost, uh, but we had him on the pod to uh, he lost that year. If you've never seen the film and like if anyone, if you've never seen the film Unbreakable, like you just yeah. go watch it. It's M it's must free on YouTube. Watch. Must watch. Yeah, it's must watch uh, Ultra Fodder. And then uh, the third episode is going to be with Dylan Bowman. And it he represents that future generation that came up after the movie was was dropped. And like, really, it really helped to like uh, it had a real impact on him and his career. Um, and so it was like really cool project to do with a good friend of mine, Matt Van Delsen, who comes on and kind of helps me out, uh, do doing co-hosting on the pod from time to time. And it was his brainchild. He like came up with the idea, um, did all the outreach, got the guests lined up. And it was like kind of cool because like Joe, all I had to do was like show up and hit record and, nice. and, and, and hang out. I mean, I had to edit the episodes, but I didn't have to like wrangle the guests, which is always really nice. So, um, but it's been really fun to do that. And I, I really appreciated doing that get th this project, this little mini series as like, you know, it's just like leading up the Western States to be able to like give back to that part of the community and like then, then put some shine like 14. It was been, it's been 14 years since unbreakable, uh, since the race, since the 2010 Western States race. Um, and to be able to like get 
JB Bennett out of hiding and talk to him for a little bit. And then, um, you know, talk to get, get a chance to have Hal on the podcast. You know, it's, it was a cool way for me to bring like an elite fast guy on the pod that, uh, but not have to talk about like him as a run. Like we talked about him as a runner, but it wasn't like, it was just like a really cool opportunity. And then, um, the episode with Dylan, which comes out next week is amazing. Cause like, it just feel, it felt like three ultra nerds, like just completely ultra nerding out on, on the film and, 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 and that time in, in the sport. So, um, yeah, that's what I'll shout out. And then also like, obviously the mid Packer pod. So, yeah, you know, listen, man. if you're not, if you're not, if you're not listening to the mid Packer pod, you're like been under a rock or something, you yeah. know, get, so like come, come check it out. Yeah. You gotta get on this level, man. I, um, yeah, I mean, thank, thanks for, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Um, Shout out to the Mid Packer Pod. Uh, man, it's been great having you here, Troy. I, and um, I'm so thankful that you grace your pre- grace the presence of the show. And it's been great talking with you, man. Yeah, to Joe, I appreciate, it, man. Thank you for reaching out. And um, I love like as someone who has to sit behind the mic and ask the questions. It's been really cool to be on the <laughs> other side of the mic and get to tell a little bit of my story, which uh, I rarely get to do. So I definitely appreciate the opportunity. Cool, man. I'm glad I could give you that experience. All right. Well, that, that wraps up the show. And thank you, everybody. And thank you, Troy. And um, happy trails. Yep. Happy trails.